Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back. Uh, well, here for another fight card prediction. We're going to be breaking down UFC 234 from the Rod Laver Arena in, uh, I think it's Melbourne, Australia, I think it was, um, for Robert Whitaker as he defends his UFC middleweight championship against Kelvin Gastelum in a great main event with Israel Adesanya against Anderson Silva in your co main event. And outside of that, folks, it's very, very ropey from there on out. Probably. I'm going to make a prediction. It's probably going to be the worst pay-per-view that we have this year. It's not a stat card whatsoever. And you just hope that these two top fights don't get altered um, at all because uh, it is thin. The pay-per-view portion is thin out the side, the two the two fights and the, the high spots on there. So uh, coming off UFC Fortaleza, must admit, I've had a really tough start to 2019 picks-wise. Betting wise, not so bad. DraftKings wise, terrible. But pick wise, I've picked a few really good underdogs. Bet a few really good underdogs. But picks, I've been off, so I need to improve on that, which I know I will do. Um, but last week was a great card, really, really fun card to watch, and it got finished by three thirty a.m., which was awesome. I was in my bed by four a.m., which is a treat for me. So, uh, yeah. Uh, props to, to Marlon Moraes. I thought he, him, I said would give him a tough fight. He's shown he's the guy ready and waiting for TJ Dillashaw. Big, big win there. Uh, not Nobody does that to Rafael Asun So props to him for that. Uh, and we're going to be moving on to this card very, very shortly. Uh, if you would like to join my DraftKings League, it's a $2 buy-in. Winner takes all. Again, I forgot who won last week. Uh, so my pro, uh, my apologies on that. Uh, I'm nearing 2,500 subscribers, guys, which is awesome. I'm on that mission to go over 3,000 with a goal of 3,200 in order. So uh, to all the new people who are subbing, thank you very much. Leave your name in the drop-down box. I, I want to say thank you on uh, my behalf for that and come and join in the conversations with your picks, potential bets. If you disagree with my picks, so on. I'm not here to be uh, saying all my picks are right because they're not. I like hearing other people's opinion. This is what it's all about. Talking about fights, loving the fights uh, and seeing uh, if we can learn off other people. And that's a, a, a big thing that I like to like to do personally. So yeah. Um, but let's get started in this event. I'm not going to try and take too much of your time and uh, go on because it's like I say, it's not the, the, the biggest and best card of the year. There's timestamps there for the fights you want to listen to. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for that. But we are going to move into. Uh, let me see. I actually forgot to bring the card up here, which is uh, not the greatest start in the world. Uh, UFC 234. I was actually going to do this last night. I was going to put these out last night and decide to watch the Super Bowl, which was a bad decision as well. So uh, it, was a, it wasn't the greatest Super Bowl you're ever going to watch. But we're going to start in the bantamweight division. Ruligi Buren against Jonathan Martinez. Uh, I did my the MMA huddle last night, and um, within the last, I want to say three hours, I've watched some a couple of fights over again because I thought maybe some of my picks were a little bit iffy, and I've actually changed two fight picks since then. So, uh, and this is one of them here actually. Initially, I was going to pick Jonathan Martinez. I did in the huddle. But I've actually went back and changed it and watched uh, some more footage on Waligi Buren. And I, I just think that he's a very, very live underdog. I'm 2 0 actually for my main underdog pick that I've picked and bet. I don't know whether I'm going to bet this underdog that I'm going to pick this week. Uh, but I will give you one every week anyway and see by the end of the year, see if I'm in a positive or negative record. So, yeah. But Waligi Buren. Um, I actually thought I thought Jonathan Martinez is going to come in here and and maybe uh, dictate the kind of the, the stand up from the southpaw kind of position because Waligi is not really all that good of a, a striker. His grappling is his main aspect of his fight, and you, you've kind of seen that in his uh, UFC performances from uh, the Rolando D fight, which I mean the guy lost to Rolando D, and that's never that is never a good sign. Uh, when you're losing to that guy who retires every time and uh, the Marlon Vera one, he can be excused for, for something like that because he get hit with a beautiful body shot in the second round there and he, he got, he pretty much just shut down from it and that happens. But I thought he actually gave a pretty good account of himself in that fight 
with with Marlon Vera with a couple of takedowns, and that's what he's all about. He's, he's about getting in close and trying to smother you and look for single legs and take you to the mat. That's where he's going to win fights without a shadow of a doubt. He's not going to outstrike you. He's not going to. I'd be surprised if he, he one hit knock, knocked out anybody with just one shot. I'd be very super surprised by that. Um, so he's going to look to want to take this to the ground without a shadow of a doubt. Jonathan Martinez, uh, pretty flat-footed, like I say, a southpaw, quite long. I thought he gave a decent performance self against Andre Sukumtath. Um, but again, I think he got 30-27 by Andre Sukumtath, or 29-28 pretty convincingly. So yeah, it is what it is with that. He even got t- took down by, 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 by Sukumtath. He is, a, I think he's a natural flyweight. Um, and this is a big fight, because if he doesn't win this one, I don't think the UFC can keep him around. I know they need bantamweights. Uh, but yeah, and I'm not. I don't know why I initially picked Jonathan Martinez because you go back and watch him, and there's nothing really stands out. He's kind of fairly decent in everything, but nothing nowhere near great in anything. And I know he's not against the greatest opponent here in Waligi Buren, but I think Buren's got the size on him, and I think he is stronger. And I think he, if he can get it to the ground, he can keep it there for large portions of the fight. In the Martinez fights where he gets put in the ground, he doesn't really throw up many submissions and uh, attacking submissions. He He's a guy that tries to work his way back to the cage and get onto his feet that way. And uh, he could do that in this one, but I think he will get taken down a couple of times. Will Eiji Buren, I'm going to pick him to win via decision here, actually. Uh, and I see he's a plus 190 dog. Um, if you're listening at the end of the show, I'll give you who... Uh, I think is my underdog pick of the week. I think I think it's a hard, it's a hard hard fight card for underdogs. Actually, there's a couple that kind of stand out to me, um, but nothing kind of clear cut. The Cerrone one was clear cut to me. The Perez one was clear cut to me. But uh, this this week's a little bit hard. But keep an eye out for that, and we'll see how we get on. Um, moving on, but I'm going to pick Luigi Bruno via decision. Uh, lightweight division. I think. Oh, is this Will away actually? I'm sure I heard this was well away later on. I could be wrong. We have Jalen Turner against Callan Potter, who's coming in here on short notice for Alex Gorges, who pulled out, uh, I want to say, a week ago now. Uh, and this is another one. Initially, I was going with Callan Potter, and then I watched a couple of extra fights on top of the ones I already watched. And I thought to myself, why are you picking Callan Potter here? And I don't think he's the worst underdog bet in the world, I'll be honest with you, because Jalen Turner, I don't think... Uh, I don't think he should be in the UFC already. I think he's very, very green still. I know he's had 10, 11 fights out in the regionals. Uh, and he, he had that unfortunate UFC debut against Vicente Luque, where he should never have been in with a guy of of that calibre uh, whatsoever. Um, and he's he's got four losses in those 11 fights, and three of them are by knockout. So that kind of big man where you can catch the end of his chin, uh, we've seen that in the... Carly King's fight card. I watched that one where he got caught with a beautiful shot in the third round and got, and got put out there. Came back, won a couple of fights, got his chance in the Dana White Contender Series and he had a beautiful stoppage uh, at the end of that first round where the, the doctor kind of stopped it. He, he kind of beat up Max Mustaki a little bit there. But like I say, a very tough debut in Vicente Luque and got, and got dealt with like a guy of that level against another guy of a certain level should. Um, Callum Porter's a guy I've known about for a long, long time. I thought he might have got a UFC kind of call up a little bit sooner than this. I think he's in his mid thirties. I want to say is 32, 33, maybe thirty four around there, early to mid. Um, last fight I actually watched of his, I watched the BJ Bland fight, which, which was the last one, which was a very, very close decision. Actually, I thought it could have went the other way. It was the Marcin Held one where he caught with a heel hook in uh, ECB? which is one that I watched uh, back in the summer last year. And he just got put in a position where Marcin Held is just a, a great, great guy catching guys of that kind of calibre on the ground. That's how he's going to win this fight. He, he's going to use his striking to get in close against Jalen Turner because if he stays on the outside, Jalen Turner's going to catch him with some very long shots. He's going to probably catch a couple of stepping knees, which I think could be a big, big thing here for Jalen Turner. Um so he's going to want to try and strike and get him up against the cage and look to try and get him to the ground. His, the way he's going to win this fight is on the ground. He's going to look for submissions through there. But Jalen Dunn is a big guy. He's going to have a, a, a reach advantage over him. I, I think he's a, definitely the stronger fighter. 
Callum Potter have seen knocked out via ground and pound. If Jalen Turner gets the opportunity to be on top, reigning ground and pound with his ground and pound with his length and leverage, I think he will he will hurt Callum Potter. Uh, I love it. I don't think it's like I said. I don't think it's the worst underdog bet. I think he's plus two twenty over here in the UK, but. Uh, Maybe that's initially why I was looking at him a little bit. And Jalen Turner, I just don't think, is ready for the UFC. But is Callum Porter ready for the UFC? I thought a while back he was, but um, he's got this opportunity here coming in short notice. I think Jalen Turner is going to catch him with some of these big, big strikes, like your stepping elbows, stepping knees, dodge uses his length well, just got to tuck his chin a little bit and don't get caught with something silly. And just be careful about not going to the ground. So I'm going to pick Julian Turner at second round TKO victory there. Moving on, keeping uh, staying in the lightweight division. Uh, Lando Venata, Marcus Hosa, Mariano. Yeesh, I was surprised that the UFC kept Lando, Lando around. They gave him a new contract. Um, and the first thing I'll say is here, I don't, I don't know who or how you can bet. <laughs> Lando Venata because initially he looked great and then he finds a way to lose a fight to draw a fight the guy is just I think he's cr like really bad for betting on you don't know what guy you're going to get now I don't I think he is viable here because his opponent is not good at all I think he's a he's got a great frame in him but he doesn't use it very well and he can get taken down very easily but when you look at Lando Venata he's got all these flashy strikes da 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 doesn't move his head, comes out the first round, lands some big shots. Could have got Matt Frivola. I, I, I still can't believe he never got Matt Frivola out of that fight. And then he let Frivola back into it and could have really lost that fight towards the end as well. Zero head movement. Uh, this is his kind of first full camp at the, the BMF ranch where they left Jackson Wink. So he's getting a full extended kind of fight camp in there. And we'll see what kind of improvements he makes. But uh, what I've seen with his opponent, Marcus Souza, uh, really bad takedown defense. Like if he was against anybody with a with a grappling advantage, like a wrestling background in the UFC, not even a good one, he would get tooled. Something rotten. He, he is like a, I think he's a welterweight coming down to one fifty five. A couple of his wins via knockout, one via submission, a couple via, via decision. Um, only watched, I think it was two or three fights and two of those were losses and he, he looked dreadful in it, he didn't look good the, the one fight where I watched via uh, where he won was uh, the guy he kind of tied the guy up and he, he submitted to kind of punches, he was just kind of raining punches and the guy just kind of didn't want any more of that but if Lando wanted to take this to the ground, I think he could easily you can make your way to Mount very easily against Rosa again, guy doesn't deserve to be in the UFC He's just getting the short notice call here like I said, I just don't know how you can be <laughs> confident in Lando Venata either. He, he'll find a way to get in there and kind of shit in the apple pie. Um, initially came out great against Tony Ferguson. Beautiful knockout of John McDessie. He lost to David Tamer. He was a massive favourite in that, and Tamer was a massive underdog. I think it was plus 350, I want to say. Um, looked good early on against Bobby Green. Faded. Quite close. Jacqua Close did what he had to do to win that fight. Matt Frivola had the opportunity to win that fight and didn't. I'm going to pick him to win via TKO here, but honestly, I'm not confident uh, in it whatsoever. I'm going to pick Lando Venata's second round TKO victory there. He rolls, he, he keeps in the UFC, um, but this is a step down, definitely, the opponents that he's been facing. Like low, 6-4 record guy. Um, yeah, if he loses this one, I'd be, I'd be super surprised. Moving on to the ESPN prelims here. Teruto Ishihara Yashibo against Mr. Perfect Kyung Ho Kang. Uh, this is the fight I'm looking forward to. I have one bet for this fight card so far. It's a parlay and it's with the uh, and one of these guys here. I'm, I'm going to pick Kyung Ho Kang. He is going to be one one leg of my parlay in this one here. Um, yeah, Ishihara, he's just kind of faded out. He's, he's fizzled out. He initially he had a really decent run when he went to um, when he beat Juliana Rosa. Beautiful knockout in the second round there. Uh, Horatio Gutierrez went there. That was a very kind of striker heavy fight where he was just the faster guy with the southpaw stance and big power. And Gutierrez just kept coming like come forward and was open for those counter shots all day long. Ate a big left hand and was put to sleep. 
Uh, then the kind of hype was building when he came over to Ireland when I met him over here and he cool dude, really nice guy. Um, and he got derailed by the GOAT, Artem Lobov, pretty much. That was a fun fight, but he just didn't really pull the trigger on Artem on that one there. Gray Maynard one was one that I will always, it will always stick with me because I thought, yes, Gray Maynard cannot take a shot. All he has to do is really just have a little bit more output and land that one shot. And he just got grappled for 15 minutes solid was really, really bad. Showed nothing, threw nothing, showed no inkling to stop the takedown, was really bad. Rolanda D, yeah. Quinones, good fighter. Peter Yan, got absolutely not dead by that guy. Peter Yan is the dude. Um, so four out of his last five are losses, and then he gets Mr. Perfect here, who I think is a really good, good, solid fighter. I, I Like I say, I still think he beat Ricardo Ramos, and then I went and bet Ricardo Ramos last week and got made to look a fool. Uh, all three of my top confident picks, guys, shit the bed. So not good. Uh, Talia Santos, Ricardo Ramos, and I cannot remember who the other guy was, but not good. Uh, I like Mr. Perfect. I think he's a really good, solid fighter. He's putting in that time now where he wasn't with the military. Um kind of absence that he had for a little bit there. Came back against Guido Canetti and he did look a little bit rusty to start off with, but once he started getting into it uh, and he started kind of just using that grappling chops that he's got, he got the submission there. And like I say, that that fight with Ricardo Ramos could have really went either way. I thought Kang got it. Ramos got the nod. Close fight. It could have went really, really could have went either way there. I just think uh, the grappling wise here, he is going to want to use takedowns, and that's something he did against Ramos. He got a couple of nice takedowns in there. I think he's stronger. I think he's positionally a lot better fighter. Um, I just think he... Not less... Not less Ishihara catches him and kind of gets that respect super early on. I don't see... I just... It's hard to see Ishihara winning this fight. I really do. Maybe it's a little bit biased on my side because I do like Kang a lot. I am a fan of his. I have been for the longest time. Way back when he fought uh, Caceres in 2013, uh, Chico Camus in the same year. Uh, I've just been a fan. I just like his fight style. I think he's a good, good fighter, but his wins aren't great. To be honest with you, Guido Kuneti, Shine, Shimizu, uh, and Tanaka. Tanaka, I think, is a tough win. Um, but that was a good fight as well. I'm going to pick him to win via submission here. Yeah, I think I'm going to pick him via submission. I think he's too strong. I think he's too big on Ishihara, and I think he, he will stop him in the, the middle part of this fight. So submission win for Kyung Ho Kang. Moving on, flyweight division. This is going to be an interesting one. Kai Kara France against uh, Rulian Piava. Um, Piava with a beautiful record. I mean, he really has got a nice record, 18-1, coming off the Dana White Contender Series, uh, where he had a win, I think it was Alan uh, Nascimento, off the top of my head. Um, and that was a fight against the guy in Nascimento who uh, decent record himself 17 and 3 17 and 4 I think he was at that, that point and it was a, a fight I think that could have really went either way there, there was some things I really liked what I seen from, uh, from Piava there were some things I really didn't like uh, with him as well but when you go back and watch some of his fights uh, guys Decent. He's pretty well-rounded. Good, long, southpaw striker. Uh, decent. Can I, he plants his feet and and really puts a bit of pop into his shots. But I think if you are fast uh, with decent movement, I think you could cause this guy some problems. And I think grappling-wise, I don't think he's all that great either. I think that there is definitely openings to take him down. And Nascimento showed that in the Dana White Contender Series where... He, he took him down and got in some bad positions. I think Nascimento gave him op ample opportunities as well to uh, reverse. So it was two guys that were a little bit sloppy in the positional kind of grappling way in, in, that, in that fight. Um, so I think if Kai Kara wants to mix up a little bit, he'll, he will try and possibly get takedowns in this fight here. I think it's something that he may be able to get if he decides to use it. I could say I was pretty... Um, Pretty impressed with Kai Kara France. I knew about him a long time ago. He was an ultimate fighter. The guy's, I mean, he's had a lot of losses on his record. 
I've watched uh, probably six or seven fights on this one where he's been dropped in at least four of the fights. He got dropped against Elias Garcia last time out. Um, but what I love about him is his volume. And he's got a great gas tank. As long as he keeps that chin tucked, he he's a really, a really good addition to the flyweight division. Like I said, I think the flyweights are going to get... They're going to get booted very soon by listening to an interview from Henry Cejudo at the weekend there. Um, if the guy goes to 135, he's going to be brutally undersized. So um, getting the UFC wins now while you actually can. and uh, Actually, I, th- I think Piava's a, a good addition as well, but how how long they, they kind of keep him around. He's another guy. He's a little bit bigger. He's going to have a height advantage over Kai Kara fronts. I don't think he's as fast. I definitely don't think he's as technical. It's what uh, Kai is. Um, and I think the one thing that really shone out to me in this uh, is the volume striking of Kai Kara France. I think he's got a lot of, like I say, a lot of technique with with faster strikes. And just I think the volume might stifle Piava in this spot here. And he is the second leg of my two-man parlay with uh, Kyung Ho Kang. So uh, I think I got it for minus one weight. Uh, I want to say, Christ, that was a wee while ago. It was earlier on uh, last week, sorry, when I, I got that. Uh, maybe even a week ago now I put that bet in. But that is my parlay pick. Uh, it's Kai Kara France and Kyung Ho Kang. Regarding the matchup, I think Kai Kara France's volume and his output is going to be too much here for, for Piava. I don't see Piava want to take it to the ground. He could give Kai Kara France some issues with, with that left hand. He's got a beautiful lead left jab with a beautiful lead left hook to the body as well, which is something that I noticed in a couple of his fights. I just like the volume. I like the output from Kai Kara France. I'm going to pick him via a decision in that one there. Featherweight division. Shane Young against Austin Arnett. This kind of interests me a little bit because I think the betting line... Let me have a look at the betting line. for The current betting line which I'm looking on five times right now. Um, where is he? Shane Young. Minus, minus three, no, yeah, minus 295. Yeah, for me, that's a little bit off considering um, his best, his only win in the UFC is Mizuta Hirota, where, where he absolutely kind of ran through him uh, no, Roland, uh, was it Rolando D. It was uh, Rolando D. We know that he's not a, a UFC caliber fighter. The guy retires. I think he's got actually a fight I saw. Is it one FC maybe? Um, or Brave. I think they're going back to the Philippines where he's from. So it makes sense to have someone local on there. Uh, but he kind of bludgeoned through Rolando D in that one. And he just really didn't want anything more. And got, that fight got stopped in the second round. Thought he gave a great performance, actually, against Alexander Volkanovsky. Showed a lot of heart. Um, just the, the will to kind of stay in the fight, even though he was completely outmatched in every facet. Couldn't stop a takedown uh, and couldn't stop the tenaciousness of Alexander Volkanovsky. This is definitely a step up from your Orlando D's. I think Austin Arnett uh, got that UFC win last time against Humber- Humberto Bandanai. He showed that uh, if you stick around uh, and just keep doing what you're doing, like Bandanai really, he's, I cannot actually, that's one of the, the picks of last year that kind of really, I actually remember it. How I, pick, I don't know why I picked up Humberto Bandanai against Austin Arnett because I could see that Austin could definitely outstrike him and definitely just wear it on it and bandanai has got quitting him you can see that where he he wants to kind of look for a way out and Austin Arnett just kept his head down there I think he had a couple of rough goals in his first couple of fights in the UFC um, with Corey Sandhagen where he got bludgeoned in that one and then Hakim Dawido who came in there and really put on kind of striking performance against him and he was wanting that UFC win but he, he just went to get in the win column and really kind of outdid Austin Arnett in the striking exchanges there. Uh, but it is a tough fight from because Shane Young is uh, tenacious. He's kind of fighting at home uh, or, or as close to home. He's from New Zealand. So he, he's he's as close to home as he's ever going to be. Um, but I, I don't... The betting line, I don't think warrants a minus 300 in my opinion. I don't think he should be up that far up. Maybe minus two. 
maybe minus 175 to 200 is somewhere I would put, maybe, maybe up to 225 at tops. But uh, I think Austin Arnett could come out here, give him a little bit of trouble with uh, volume also. I think that Shane Young's going to get takedowns. Band and I got takedowns on Austin Arnett. Um, Sanhagen got one briefly. I think the tenaciousness of Shane Young and just, I think he's grappling ability is yeah, I don't know. Shane Young, I don't know, it's just uh, I don't know, I'm kind of a little bit back and forth in this one because I think Austin Arnett is going to give him a really tough fight. I've seen some people out there like pretty heavy in Shane Young and, and saying he's going to run through him and he might, but Maybe I just don't see it as well. I'm going to go Shane Young via decision in this one. I think Austin's a tough guy to get out of there. If Shane Young gets him out there, I think that's a, a good fair than his cup, honestly. Shane Young via decision. Uh, going back to the lightweight division, Devontae Kincaid-Smith against uh, the maestro Dong Young Kim. And this is one that jumped out to me very, very quickly when I saw the fight get put together. Uh, and it was one I wanted to watch a little bit of footage on. We'll start with, I suppose you could say, one of the newcomers to the division and uh, Devontae Smith. He's coming off an absolutely explosive win over Julian Arosa when he caught him in the first minute of that fight. Absolutely starched him. The guy's an athletic freak, big power, a lot of speed, and you can see that he's going to be a problem for, for some guys. He's still, uh, I can't remember his age, is it 24, 25? He, so he's really coming into his ascendancy. He's, the next couple of years are going to be vital for that guy. Um, but being in the UFC, you're going to get matched. You're going to get, every win you're going to get, you're going to get a harder matchup. And this is definitely a harder matchup than what Julian Rose is. I thought he got a little bit disrespected on the Dana White contender show. He was like a minus, uh, a plus two, 250 dog, I think he was, against Joseph Lowry, I remember. Came out there, absolutely bludgeoned him with elbows and, and won in the first round there. Beat a UFC vet in Justin Edwards via knockout in the first round. His fight before that, with his only loss in his record to UFC fighter <laughs> John Gunther. I, I just I can't believe he lost to that guy. Well, uh, and that was only, what, a year ago that he lost? Two years ago? They lost to John Gunther. But John Gunther, like uh, as much as maybe I, I'm ragging on him and some other people might do, the guy's made it to the UFC, got some fights, uh, and the guy's determined. Like he, He's a durable, durable dude. Um, and a tough guy for these young fighters to face, and it's shown that one there. Since then, he's moved to Factory X, which is a very underrated, very good fight camp that is going to have a big year. They've got a, a world uh, title fight against John Jones with Anthony Smith coming out of that camp there with Mark Montoya. Really, really solid, solid fight camp coming out of Colorado. Uh, but this fight rings a bell to him because it's like, can he catch Dong Young Kim with that big shot that's going to put him out? Now, Dong Young Kim is, uh, he's took some big shots before. We've seen him, we know he can take a big shot and keep coming. We, that fight with uh, Polo Reyes, UFC 199, one of the best fights you can watch. Now, we did get caught in that third round, I think the accumulation of damage in that one really took its toll, and uh, yeah, he went out. Since then, he's came back. Three wins, uh, two decisions, one via stoppage. He knocked out Gomi. Gomi's not got a chin anymore, so that's not really anything to brag about. Uh, Brennan O'Reilly, yeah. Damien Brown's a good win, though, even though some people, I think, gave that to Damien Brown. I thought it was close. It could have went either way. I'm not a judge, so uh, they've seen it how they've seen it. But um, I think there's a tough fight for Devontae Smith. It's inter The first round is going to be interesting here. If Devontae Smith can can't come out here and catch him with a shot, then I think two and three get interesting. I think that Dong Young Kim might try to use some grappling in that kind of aspect of the fight. Uh, and he can, he can let some shots go himself. First round's a big one for me because, like I said, Devontae Smith is a big athletic um, athletic freak with a lot of speed and a lot of power. And those are scary guys because they can catch you at any moment and you're going to wake up and stand at the lights. Very fast, very fast footwork as well. I, I want to see what his gas tank's like. I know there's a, there's a fight out there I've been trying to look for. It's a four round, the fourth round where he wins via TKO. So I'd love to have seen that 15 minutes to see what it was like. Um, whether he was gassing in, in that one, if he if was looking languid and looking tired. Um, 
so yeah, kind of the read I've got in this fight is it can he land that big power shot in the first round that is going to put this guy down? I think it's his first fight as well, fighting outside of um, America. So that's always a tough thing to kind of adjust to as well. I'm going to go Dong Young Kim. I'm going to I'm going to say he survives the early round and uh, the, the early adversity. I think he comes through. And I think he could start to work, use his experience. Now, the guy's got some losses himself. He's lost like eight times out of the 25, 27 fights or something in that range that he is. He's lost. He's lost the vast majority of them. But I just think he could use that experience here and I think he could win a decision, actually. I think he could maybe stop Devontae Smith later on. I'm going to go Dong Young Kim via decision. Um, and another nice dog pick. That's it's one of the dog picks there that it might be my dog pick of the week. I'm I'm not too sure. I, I don't know whether I have one this week because I think it's tough. I think I'll give you one anyway. Whether I'm going to bet it is another thing altogether. I'm going to go Dong Young Kim via decision in that one there. So we're now moving on to the pay per view portion of the card. Jimmy Crute against Sam Alvey. This was supposed to be Ryan Spann against Jimmy Crute. Uh, and I liked... Uh, I think Ryan Spann had a, a chance in that fight. I do. I really do. Now Jimmy Crute's getting the experience of Sam Alvey, a guy who's been in the UFC for a few years now. The guy's got um, 45 fights. So this is a big step up in experience against like this guy here. Um, but... Poor. Watching Sam Alvey fight, uh, Sam Alvey fights is rough. He, all these people that um, I've seen numerous people saying like, "Oh, this guy's a knockout artist," and I'm like, "Really? Like, how many knockouts has he had in the last what three, four years? Two? Kevin Casey, matching uh, Martin Pracknell, but brutal knockouts. Don't get me wrong, the guy's got power, but I think at two five, some of these guys are going to take some of that power a little bit better." Um. He's coming off a TKO loss as well, where he hit some big shots against Little Nog down in Brazil. That was a good pick um, to people who picked that. I think Mr. Arkansas picked picked that one. That was a good one. That's uh, and he, he was a big dog in that as well. So props to props to him for that. Um, last two wins, Gian Valente and Martin Pratnio, like we're talking about the knockout there, where Pratnio just kind of came forward with his chin in there. Yeah, that's not good against Sam Ali. If you did that and some of the power that he does possess, he's going to hit you and, and you're going to go down. Uh, and now he's got this young upstart in Jimmy Crute who's coming off a UFC victory against uh, Paul Craig. Got the finish late in round number three with a beautiful, beautiful Kimura. Looked a nasty, nasty Kimura as well. So you can see the guy's got um, some skills on the ground. He's got some power there as well. So that's something you have to keep an eye on. The guy's still very green though. Um, still a super green, green fighter. And against a guy with 45 fights. I don't know how many fights off the top of my head that uh, Jimmy Crute has. Let me just check. That's something actually that's interesting me. Uh, Jimmy Crute, I see eight and no? Nine and no. So nine fights, like I say, he got taken down by Paul Craig. That was something that kind of worries me a little bit because not, not that he's ever really used it, but uh, Sam Alvey does have wrestling chops. He, he worked with Dan Henderson for as many years, but the guy just never uses it. So that's something you might want to try here, but then you have to be careful with the jiu-jitsu skills of Jimmy Crute. He's definitely got some uh, some skills in the ground there. Mm. So I'm a little bit... I don't really fancy picking some. I'm going to pick Jimmy Crute. I'm going to pick Jimmy Crute via submission. I think that he might find a way to work it to work to the back of Sam Alvey and actually get a rear naked choke. But I think there's going to be some hairy spots in this one here. I'm not super confident in it because it is a big step up against Sam Alvey and I know his output wanes and he doesn't throw that much and it's an, always an ugly fight with Sam, Sam Alvey. But I'm going to go Jimmy Crute. I'm going to go some mission in uh, round number, maybe three in that one there. Um, but like I say, I think that one could be a bit of a stinker. I can't believe this fight is a UFC pay-per-view caliber fight in 2019. This is crazy. Montana De La Rosa against Nadia Kassem. Jeez. Uh, if you watch the Nadia Kassem Alex Chambers fight, that was rough. That was a rough, rough fight to watch. I must admit, I was not impressed with uh, what I saw in that fight there. 
doesn't have a resemblance a takedown defense by the looks of it as a striker as a slow striker wide open for counter striker a good counter striker not that montana is a really good counter striker but alex chambers took this like she's a 40 year old alex chambers was taking this guy a girl down at will uh the one thing that nadia did do that well is she threw up submissions that kind of got away got alex off her to when she was uh, kind of looking dominant on the ground um but alex passed her a few times very very easily and what is montana de la rosa and what she a kind of main skill set is her wrestling i think she's going to be able to to cut through nadia pretty easily in, in takedown sets, whether she can stay composed and look for her own submission, which I think she can. It's kind of funny because Nadia Kassim, uh, I'm not the biggest Instagram guy, but I occasionally go on and I went on a few weeks ago and I looked at her story and she was shouting and she was saying she was going to kill this and kill that. And I'm like, what's going on? Supposedly her boyfriend, who I thought was Suman Mokhtarian and her head coach was cheating on her. Uh, so that's a little bit crazy. It'd be interesting to see if that was true and whether he's going to be in the corner for her. Um, how we see this match going? I think Montana's going to get takedowns. I think she's going to work her way to get her own submission here. So I'm going to go uh, probably an arm uh, arm triangle choke. I think I'm going to go for round number two. I think she'll, she'll get takedowns. Nadia might be able to get back to her feet. I think she'll get taken down instantly. I think she has to try and land something fairly decent on the feet. But uh, I think Montana's going to be dogged and just get to the ground and find a submission there. So Montana De La Rosa via a submission in round number two. This is a good fight. Uh, Rani Yaya against Ricky Simon, uh, Simone. Uh, yeah, Ricky S- Simone, he's he's did, did what he's had to in his kind of UFC tenure. He looked very, very good. Uh, he's a guy that obviously, if, you, if you're, you're a fan of the sport, you've seen coming through the ranks um very dogged fighter seen him on a uh, titan seen him on lfa where he beat chico Camus over 25 minutes looked dominant there then comes into the ufc mirab davishvili took his licks in that one early on but uh eventually came through kept working kept getting um kept getting in the face of mirab and mirab started to to really start to decrease in his output, was there to be countered, was there to be hit. And um, Ricky got his, he, a couple of takedowns in there. He did get taken down himself, which is something that's kind of interesting to me. Uh, find a way to get back to his feet. Then again, he's late in the third round and he's got him in a choke. And it's just a weird sequence of events where... Uh, Mirab looks like he's okay, then he goes out, then he's okay, and then Ricky Simon, uh, Simone gets the, the victory via KOTQ, I believe it was, classed as. Then he gets Montel Jackson. This is going to be a good win in his, his record for years to come, so it is. Uh, gets many takedowns against Montel, gets outstruck a little bit, takes some some big shots, keeps barreling forward, Um but gets those takedowns and establishes those takedowns and wins a unanimous decision. Uh, that's one of the things I really like. It's just this tenacity and looking to get the fight to the ground. And seeing that, Rani Yaya, I think if he was to be the most comfortable in any way in this fight, it's going to be on the ground. Um, but there are some big red flags for me with Rani Yaya. Is and one is his cardio. His cardio is not great. It's never really been great. And uh, yeah, but the guy's been around for a long, long time. Super, super dangerous guy, and he's he's got a lot of confidence. Three wins, three submission wins as well. Um, Luke Sanders first round um, heel hook, I think it was. Russell Doan caught him in an arm triangle choke in the third round there. So even if if this guy's super tight, you still have to be. Very, de- uh, very, very uh, attentive on the ground of this guy with submissions that he threw. Caught Henry Brionis via Kimura. Um, I mean, the guy's got... How many UFC wins has he actually got? That's interesting to me. Uh, Mike Brown was his first win. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 UFC wins. That's not to be sniffed at. I know it might not be against some of the 
greatest of opponents, but Tanaka and Matthew Lopez are all fairly, fairly serviceable fighters. On the feet, I think Ricky's faster. I think he's got a bit more variety, but I think initially he's going to want to look for takedowns and take him to the ground. He just has to be very, very careful on the ground w- with Rani Yaya because Rani can throw up a submission, potentially catch him with it. But I think the volume, the tenacity, the pace that Rani Yaya, uh, that Ricky Simone will put on him will start to really uh, wear out uh, Rani Yaya. And I think it, this could be a, a win here for for Ricky uh, Simone. So I'm going to go Ricky Simone via decision in that one there. Cool main event of the night. The style, the last style bender, Israel Adesanya against uh, the Spider Anderson Silva in the cool main event. Now, when this fight got put together, there was a lot of uproar regarding this fight, and I'm kind of, I'm with them on it. I don't really want to see Anderson Silva fight anymore. I'll be honest with you. I think that he could walk away from the sport. I mean, it's been two years since he last fought anyway, and that was a fight that I don't even think he won. I thought Derek Brunson was. Super unlucky in that one. I picked Anderson Silva in that one. I think I actually bet Anderson Silva in that spot, which was crazy. Um, but was kind of a little bit lucky to come out of that there. Excuse me. Uh, lost to Daniel Cormier. Had had a couple of spots in that fight where he, uh, in that fight there where he landed with a couple of body kicks and Cormier kind of shut down a little bit there and went straight to the wrestling. But you can definitely see uh, a deterioration. Back in the day, this guy was the most feared guy there was in the sport, without a shadow of a doubt. And people would be would be would be shoot before they got even in there. But you still see parts of his game that he can release at certain times. Like the best bin fights, a prime example, gets out box, gets hit up quite a bit in that one. But all it takes is one opportunity, and he could land something spectacular. And Bisbin kind of got lucky that at the end of the round. Um, took place and he he took his he took his chops with that one and came back and won the fight. Um, but yeah, the guy, like I say, that Brunson one was a little bit iffy. Before that, his last win was two thousand and twelve against Stephen Bonner. That's that's the last fight. Obviously, the Chris Weidman one is where his kind of invincibility kind of left him, and since then he's been a kind of shadow himself i mean the, the nick diaz when you can give him that one there he just can outclass nick diaz but turned to no contest uh, if after testing positive for drostantalone and all that but back in the day nobody wanted to stand with this guy the guy was so feared um but you can definitely see now that the fear is gone um there's not a lot of output there's a lot of feints there's a lot of kind of showboating um but then you've got someone out of sanya who's Pretty, I don't want to say similar, but he is pretty similar. Um, I just watched the countdown to UFC 234 there, and there were dance moves and like certain moves they were kind of mimicking and stuff like that. Adesanya has been fantastic since he came into UFC, um, and pushing right up at that division very, very quickly. And and looks, looks the real deal and is in line to face the winner of the main event, Rob Wilkinson. I thought he looked okay in that one. Showed the guy faints really well. His um, range management is awesome. His uh, pick of shots with his combinations, the way he kind of throws one strike and then he waits and then he, he twitches a little bit and then he throws that long left hand strike. And his finishing sequence last time out of Derek Brunson, it was his most complete performance. I thought the Tavares fight was a, he looked great in that fight uh, and beat a really tough, tough guy in Brad Tavares. But the Derek Brunson, when Derek Brunson was. He was horrible in that fight. He was coming out there just wanting, just not wanting to get hit pretty much and was trying to hang on to Odisanya for, for dear life. And then once he landed just that one clean shot, Derek Brunson never put his, his hands up again, ate a head kick, um, ate a step in, uh, step in knee. And from there, it was just lights out and he got him like 10 seconds before the end of that first round. Just... Uh, a really good performance from Adesanya. The one thing I've got here is, is, is it going to show all, and it doesn't sound like it, it doesn't seem like it, he's not going to show all that much respect to Anderson Silva. I think it was one of his idols growing up. But from what I'm seeing and the kind of read I've gotten him, I don't think he's going to show too much respect to Anderson Silva. And that's something that I think he has to do because if he, he sits back and doesn't throw as much and Silva, I don't think he's going to throw as much. It could be a pretty boring fight here. Um, I'm 
picking Adi Sanya. I picked him for a TKO, but for some reason, I just think this could go to decision. I think it could be a 15 minute fight where Silva will land very little. I think Adi Sanya will, I don't want to say style on him, but I just think he will outstrike him and be pinnacle. Uh, just be a, a far better striker and, and kind of just throw more and and show different looks to Anderson Silva that he hasn't seen from fighters in a long time. I think um, he could be, it could be one of those fights where he's maybe on the highlight reel of Adesanya. He could catch him with one of these kicks up the middle. Potentially, who knows? Um, I'm excited to see Silva back because it's always exciting. I know I said at the start there, I don't think he needs to fight anymore, but it's always exciting because if you grew up watching fights and seeing how dominant that guy was and how great he was. It brings back all those memories, but it's 2019. The guy's 44 years old, uh, 44 years old, I want to say. Uh, and these new breed fighters are, are brutes. Uh, but I'm going to go Israel Asanya via a decision. I think that it just might be, I don't know, I just got a funny feeling decision might take place in that one there. But I'm going to go for the last style bend on that one. And the main event of the night, this is a banger of a fight. This is a f- great fight. Robert Whitaker defends his UFC middleweight championship against Kelvin Gastelum. Uh, two young bucks of the division, 27, 29 years old, I believe they are. Both uh, Ultimate Fighter winners. Um, both fighting up uh, 28 and 27 years. So they're very, very similar ages. Um, both guys that came in, they were 170. They realised they didn't want to make that weight cut anymore. Kelvin kind of got pushed up to 185 because he kept missing weight. But he fought some of the so he like he he fought Tyron Woodley very very close down in in their fight there. So he's fought some of the best guys at one seventy, and since he's come up to kind of one eighty five, he's kind of faced. I don't want to say he's faced the old men of the division, but when you look at his record, Tim Kennedy he knocked out viciously in the third round. He he wasn't around much longer. Vitor Belfort, uh, he starched him in the first round there. Lost to Chris Weidman, which. Uh, Surprised me a little bit in that one. He had his spots in that fight, but lost there. And then he, he knocked out that that knockout of Michael Bisman. You've seen the speed, like the, the short right hand and then the bullet laser left that he's got. That's that's his best shot. His laser, like his left hand is so vicious and it's so fast that you have to be very, very careful. Um, and then Ronaldo, uh, the Jackery fight, I thought it was close, honestly. I think he could have went either way. Um, I think I picked... Uh, Jackery in that one. I think fight time, I thought Kelvin won. I'm going to watch it back either way um, there. So I know he's facing the older statesman, but these are guys like Jackery's one belt um, and other organisations. Michael Bisbin was a UFC champion. Weidman was a UFC champion. Belfort, a yonks ago, was a UFC champion. Um, but he's fought and beat good fighters down at 170 and 185. You can't take that away from him. His skill set, he's got that uh, pressure fighter um with his strike and he, his favourite combination is clearly that short right followed by that laser left and it's a beautiful, beautiful shot. Fairly good footwork. Um, I think that Robert has better footwork. I actually think the crisper striker is is Kelvin. But I actually think the more dangerous striker is Robert. I think Robert's got some beautiful, beautiful techniques. A lead left hook, especially he can go up high, he can go to the body, he can... He can Faint off to the left, throw a right hand off that. Now, we never seen that in the last couple of fights. I think he busted his uh, right hand up in the UL fights. So he used like that long left jab and he'd occasionally throw in a body shot with it. And he's got one of the, I think he's got one of the most underestimated head kicks in the game. Dangerous, powerful. Um, I don't want to say how UL rocked in the fight, but you can definitely see it took effect on him and drained the gas tank fairly badly of uh, Yo Romero. Talking of the old Joel Romero fights, I mean, having two wins on, on your record over that guy. Now, initially, I thought Robert won that fight when I watched it live. Now, you've got to remember, I watch at 6 a.m. So it, it's sometimes a little bit, it's not as easy to kind of score fights as you as you would think. Then I you rewatch it. I actually think it was a draw. Now, I know it wasn't for the belt. It's because you will miss, miss weight. Um, but he still went 25 minutes hard. He went 50 minutes hard with Yo Romero. Like he did that such a good job in the first fight of defending takedowns that Yo Romero barely, barely shot for takedowns in the second fight. Anytime he did, Robert did a great job there. So I don't think Kelvin's going to use 
some of that wrestling which he came up um, his younger days in the sport. I think that's what, what he used a lot of. I don't think that's going to work here with Robert. I don't think if if it doesn't work for you well, I don't think Robert's that type of fighter to to dominate Robert Whitaker on the ground. I could be wrong there. Um, so it was predominantly a striking battle in the second fight, and I thought Rob composed, um, varied the strikes beautifully in the first two rounds. Beautiful leaping side side leg kick, and was busting him up with that. And then in the third round showed the heart of a champion, got hit with a big shot, got dropped. I thought he got back to his feet, looked fairly decent uh, in the exchanges there, landed a couple of beautiful elbows. Uh, UL was throwing the kitchen sink at him, hit him with some big shots. Then I thought he regrouped in round four, and that was a closer. I think that's the pivotal round, and it's hard to score. It really is. Some I think a lot of people give it for UL. Some would give it for, for Rob. Round three and five is definitely Wales rounds with it with the knockdowns. Uh, so close, close fight, but a great fight. And he showed that he's he can take big shots. Ewell is just a tough guy to face. I think he's the hardest matchup actually in the whole of the division because one second he's so slow and being plodding. Next re the next thing you're, you're you're waking up at the lights and you're knocked out. Wideman, Rock, Cold, Machida. I could go on. I could uh, with that guy. He's so dangerous. Brunson back in the day when he was losing that fight. Um, but with this fight here, two crisp, crisp, crisp strikers. I think the uh, like I say. I think that just the speed advantage or the crisper strikes go to. Gastelum. I think there's more variety with the shots with Robert Whitaker, and I think he throws in head kicks more. I think he can throw in some knees in there. Uh, he kind of throws not as kind of straight and crisp. Throws a little bit kind of angle angled strikes there, which which catch him. You seen the Jackery fight specifically after that first round. He he, he kind of looped the shots just a little bit, not too much. Caught Jackery, and once he caught Jackery once, that was the end of that fight. The head kick sealed it. It's the same with the Brunson fight. The head kick sealed it. Um, so it's just interesting to see how this fight's going. I think I can see why. I think some people are, are betting Kelvin Gaston. I don't think it's the worst bet in the world, honestly. I think he was plus two twenty a couple of days ago, so you're getting value in that. But it's whether you think. It's whether you think he's going to go down to Australia and do that. I think going down to Australia and beating Robert Whitaker in his own backyard is a tough, tough out for anybody. Um, interesting to see who's going to get backed up as well. Because Derek Brunson, initially, he caught him with some shots, backed him up. But once Rob was like, he was patient in those uh, kind of the flurrying moments, the fury moments, as I like to call it. Um, and he, once he caught his shot, he stayed patient and just worked on Brunson. And he did that a couple of times with uh, Jackery. And he's just he's, a, he's such a great fighter, Robert Worker. Really is in the prime of his of his career. I've seen some people say he took too much damage in his last fight. That's true. He he got knocked down twice. Took some big blows from uh, Yo Romero, but that's eight months passed by. I think he's took the right amount of time there. He's fighting at home. He's not had to fly around to America for press conferences and this and that. And So he's been at home. He's been training there. And that's a big thing going down to Australia, having to face the guy, the hometown guy. I just think Kelvin Gaslam's got a tough, tough out going down there. But it is a winnable fight for him. I do. I think he could catch him with a shot. Um, it's going to be interesting. I think I the one of the bets I like for this one is under 4.5 rounds. Um whatever the line that may be. I haven't had one over here in the UK. I've not even looked at the American ones, but it's something I'm going to look at. But I'm going to pick Robert Wicker via knockout. I think he's going to... I just think he's going to catch him in, in one of these exchanges and hurt Kelvin Gaslam. So, but it could happen the other way around where Kelvin could catch him. Who knows? Who knows? But my preference is Robert Wicker in the main event there. So that's my picks for UFC 234. We're back next week for UFC, I think in Phoenix, and the return of the former UFC heavyweight kingpin, uh, king, kingpin and Cain Velasquez um, against Francis Ngannou, and there's a lot of good fights on that card. I think it's a Sunday night card as well, which is, I that's my, actually my favourite time of the, I, I like Sunday nights, I don't know why, I always have. Um, so I'm looking forward to breaking that one down. I've watched a couple of fights already today regarding that. I'm going to watch a couple more before I go to bed in the next few hours. Um, but until then, enjoy the card. Uh, I'm not. I'm actually not going to watch this card live. I'm going to go to my bed. I'm not staying up till six a.m. to watch 
this fight card, but I know it's got a couple of fights at the end of it, which are great, but I will go up 8, 9 a.m. on uh, Sunday morning and watch the fights then. So enjoy the card if you're watching it. Let me know your bets. Let me know your picks. If I dis- if you disagree with me on something, then let me know and we can talk about it. Um, until then, all the best. Take care and uh, enjoy the fight.